In this video we will show you all of the techniques that you will need to write the chords for a major key song. We will show you how to use these techniques by creating an example song in the key of G major. As the video progresses we will create updated versions of the song using the techniques described. This will allow you to follow along and see real songwriting decisions in action. Throughout the video we will not use complex chords, only simple major and minor triads, so this is perfect for a beginner song Songwriter. Okay, let's begin. The first thing we need to do is work out what chords we can use in a major key. The chords in a major key are created using notes from the major scale. Each chord is made up of three notes. This is why you may sometimes see them referred to as triads. In this video we will use the key of G major for all of our examples, so let's use the G major scale to create our chords. The G major scale has the notes G, A, B, C, D, E and F sharp. If we start with the first note G, skip a note to B and then skip a note to D, we have three notes G, B and D. These three notes create a G major chord. This is the first chord in the key of G major. We label it with an uppercase 1 Roman numeral. We can then repeat the process on the second note in the G major scale, which is A. We start on A, skip a note to C, and skip a note from C which gets us to E. A, C and E are the notes in an A minor chord. This is the second chord in the key of G major. We label it with a lowercase 2 Roman numeral. You can then repeat this process for every note of the G major scale. This will generate a pool of 7 chords in total. This means that our 1 chord is G major, the 2 chord is A minor, 3 is B minor, 4 is C major, 5 is D major, 6 is E minor and 7 is F sharp diminished. As you have seen each chord is labelled with a Roman numeral. The upper Case Roman numerals indicate major chords and the lowercase Roman numerals indicate minor chords. You may be confused by the diminished 7 chord. Don't panic as we won't be using any diminished chords in this video. We will explain more about the 7 chord later on, so keep watching to the end of the video for more information about that. This means that we have 3 major and 3 minor chords in the key of G major to construct a song with. This is true of any major key. We chose G major because because the six chords are easy to play on many instruments, especially as open chords on the guitar. This can help beginners to start their songwriting journey. If you would like to use a different major key, all you have to do is write out the seven notes in the relevant major scale and repeat the chord construction process that we described earlier. If you don't know the notes in the major scale that you want to try, search for them online and they will be easy to find. If you don't want to work the chords out, just search online for chords in your chosen major key and you will will get a list of chords with Roman numerals next to them. This is where the Roman numeral system comes into play. We will show you progressions and songs in this video in the key of G major, but all you have to do is look at the Roman numerals used. Then you can use the Roman numeral order again in your own compositions and the actual key of the song doesn't matter. It allows you to use chord progressions across keys so you just remember the Roman numerals. Chords in a key are like a palette of colours for a painter, they each bring something to a chord progression and when blended in different quantities and orders bring new and interesting sounds to a song that they would not do in isolation. You may also see the chords in a major key referred to as tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, leading tone. These are known as the harmonic functions of the major key chords. They refer to the roles that these chords will play in the key in the same way that the Roman numerals do. Don't worry if this all seems confusing and overwhelming, as we go through the examples Examples, we will start with the simplest progressions and techniques and slowly build them up. Take your time, watch again and practice if you need to. Also feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. With patience you will become more confident in your songwriting and a lot of this will become second nature in no time. Let's now take the first steps in writing our major key song. The most important chords in a major key are the major chords with the Roman numerals 1, 4 and 5. Chord 1 is the most important chord. You can Think of chord 1 or the tonic as the home chord. It offers grounding and stability. It feels 
safe and secure. When a core progression arrives back at chord 1, it provides resolution and a strong sense of having finished. Many songs will end on a 1 chord to provide the listener with a satisfying feeling of completion. After chord 1, the 5 chord is the second most important. When placed before the 1 chord, it helps to generate the powerful feeling of returning home. This sense of resolution is often referred to as a cadence. A cadence can be strong or weak, depending on the impression of finality that it brings. The 4 chord can also be used in the cadence when moving back to the 1 chord. You may know this as the plagial cadence or the Amen cadence. It has a slightly softer or more subtle feeling than the 5 to 1 change. These three major chords are important in defining a major key song. They are like musical scaffolding from which we can build out other chords and ideas, but are structurally integral to the major key. The positioning of these three important chords can make or break a song. So we'll start our major key songwriting journey by using these three chords. Thousands of songs have been written using the chords 1, 4 and 5. Despite only having three chords, these songs will have covered a wide range of emotions and subjects. Let's start with the simplest progression possible, the three chord trick. This involves playing the three major chords in Roman numeral order. Here it is played over two bars. Please note that we will use the 4-4 four, four time signature in examples and songs as it is the most commonly used time signature with four beats in a bar. This simple idea could be repeated four times to create a verse or chorus. If we stretch out the chords to one per bar and repeat the one chord, we create a four bar idea. This four bar idea could fit nicely into a song as an intro or a short verse. There are a huge amount of variations that these three simple chords can fit into over an eight bar song section. Here are a few more that provide slight variations on the chord order. Listen out for the different cadence that moving from four to one provides as opposed to five to one. Song sections are often constructed with a number of bars that is a multiple of four. A very common one of these is the 12 bar section. It is fundamental to the blues, rock and pop. The 12 bar length is often used in song verses. It also implies a certain order for the one, four and five chords, which listeners are very familiar with.
We can also make an easy alteration to the 12 bar section by changing to chord four in bar two. This is referred to as quick change blues because we don't dwell on the one chord so much. Also spot the changes we've made to bars nine to 12 to add interest. Songs will sometimes go beyond 12 bars, with 16 being another common choice. The construction of a 16 bar section could involve repetition, for example two 8 bar sections, or it could have no internal repetition. Popular songs have lots of repetition within them to make them memorable, so if you write longer sections that don't repeat, they might be more appropriate for slower songs or maybe a verse instead of a chorus. Let's use some of the ideas we have discussed to produce the first version of our song in the key of G major. The song will evolve as we go through this video using techniques that have been discussed to give you practical examples. It will have four sections, intro, verse, chorus and bridge. We won't repeat the song sections once you've heard them each one in turn, but in a full song you would likely repeat sections. For example, you might arrange it as intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. There are also other song sections available to a songwriter. We will keep it as simple as possible in this video. Feel free to take this song and use it as a template or inspiration for your own songwriting. Our first song draft isn't very interesting. Even though we are currently only using three major chords, we can make a few tweaks to improve it. The first problem is we are playing the one chord too much. Although we said it is important, you do want to save its strong feeling for important parts of a song. So the song feels like it is actually going somewhere and then returning home. 18 of the 28 bars have the one chord in them, which is too many. The one chord also features at the start and end of sections, so we feel a bit stuck or static and fixed. The other main problem is the intro. It is entirely the one chord. This bleeds into the verse which starts on one as well. We need some more variation. If we look at the four bar sections of our song, they mainly end on chord one. This means that once you've heard bar four, you know what to expect on bar eight and so on. This weakens the effect of the chord later on. This will be true of any chord you use, but particularly the important chords one and five. If you want to transform your songwriting, then use the ultimate musical sketch pad, Hookpad. We use Hookpad to show you chord progressions and melodies in our videos because it is easy to use and intuitive. Click the link in the description below and see what Hookpad can do for your music. Let's now tackle a few of the previously mentioned issues with a revised version of our song. We'll discuss the changes after hearing it.
first thing we have done is change the intro to the 5 chord. This helps to mask what key we are in to begin with and reduce our use of the 1 chord. It also increases the desire to move to the 1 chord which we frustrate by starting the verse on chord 4. Chord 1 is now only in 6 bars out of 28. This means that when we hear the 1 chord, it has a bigger impact than before. The 1 chord only features once in bar 3 of the verse. This leaves us wanting to hear more of it and increases its impact in bar 1 of the chorus. We have extended chord 5 in the repeating chorus to create more of a build up for our cadence back to the 1 chord. Our bridge is centred around the 4 chord and now ends on the 5 chord to provide the strong cadence back to the 1 chord depending on what section you choose to follow the bridge. I hope you can see how a few well placed alterations can change even a simple 3 chord song. We'll come back to the song for more updates later on. As we mentioned in discussing the first version of our song, starting and ending sections with the one chord leads to very safe sounding progressions. If we start on one chord, then we start safe and in balance and go somewhere else. If the progression ends on chord one, then we feel like a sense of order has been re-established. So sometimes it is useful for a songwriter to move chord one away from these two positions to provide a bit of instability or unexpectedness and interest. Listen to these three examples and spot the difference. The effect might be more subtle because we are using only three major chords, but thinking about this idea will become more powerful later on as we add more chords. It can also be worth thinking about chord 5 in a similar way because of its power in the 5 to 1 cadence. You've seen the chords 1, 4, 5 in order a few times already. When we play chords in numerical order we create an escalator effect. Starting from lower to higher numbers we feel like we are ascending or rising up. And if we go from higher to lower numbers we feel like we are descending or falling down. This effect can be used to take the listener somewhere as it creates movement, usually leading to chords 1 or 5. So far we have only used one chord in a bar, but you can of course change this. If the chords in a song only change once per bar, it becomes very predictable and boring. This is even more pronounced with fewer chords. There are many ways you can alter the chord change rate, let's look at a few of them now. If we change the rate of chord change at the end of a sequence, it can create movement. For example, in bar 4, before we move back to the 1 chord, we change to the 2 chords in a bar. We could also extend this into bar 3.
Look at how this essentially creates a bar's worth of the four chord. Be aware of how altering chord change rate can affect the entire progression or song section. Listen to how the feel changes if we hear a chord for only a single beat in a bar. It really makes the chord stand out. There are a whole host of different options with chord rate change, so let's incorporate a few into the third draft of the song we are creating to get a feel for them. Notice how the chord rate change creates interest at key parts of the song to stop it getting monotonous. The use of one chord per beat in parts of the song creates a rhythmic feel and reduces the chord's harmonic significance. What if I told you we can expand our set of three major chords to nine without using any new or complex chord types? This is where major chord inversions come in. At the beginning of the video, we created our chords with three notes each from the major scale. The first note in each chord is what gives the chord its letter. The other notes in the major chord are the third and fifth. For example, G major had the notes G, B and D. Its first note is G. This is also called the root note or bass note. It is played as the lowest note in the chord and may be played by the bass player in a band to signify the chord. If you change which of the three notes in the chord are played at the lowest pitch, then you create a chord inversion. If we play the third note of the major chord as the lowest note, then we create a first inversion chord. So if we play the B note as the lowest note in our G major chord, then we create a G major first inversion chord. The order of the other two notes above this do not matter, it's the lowest note that counts. Playing the fifth note of the major chord as the lowest note creates a second inversion chord. Therefore playing the D note as the lowest note in the G major chord creates a G major second inversion. Again, the order of the other two notes above this do not matter. You may see inverted chords written a few different ways in notation. One way is where a small i is written before the chord's Roman numeral. This is for a first inversion. The second inversion uses two small i's. Another way is by using a small 6 or a 6 and 4 after the Roman numeral. The 6 is a first inversion and the 6 and 4 is a second inversion. Finally, you may see a slash used. The the letter before the slash is the chord and the letter after the slash is the bass note being played. Inversions are useful because they bring a different character to the major chords. Placing the emphasis on a different bass note allows them to be used in many ways by a songwriter. First inversions have a sense of movement, propelling a progression forward compared to the root chord. Placing the third note in the bass makes the chord want to rise or fall to the next chord, making it useful in descending or ascending progressions. Here's an example of using the first inversion. Listen to the difference it brings compared to the standard root chord.
Second inversions are not as assertive as a root chord, but also not as mobile as the first inversion. They work well in intros and bridges to bring a different, less confident sound. Listen to them at work in this example. The second inversion one chord is often used to delay and then lead to the five chord because they share the same bass note. For example, Let's use some chord inversions to make the next revision to our song. We'll discuss the changes after having a listen to it. Pay particular attention to the inversions. We use the second inversion five chord for three bars of the intro to increase the impact of the five chord in bar four. It also adds some variation rather than four bars of the same sound. The first inversion one chord in the verse breaks up two bars of the one chord and also steps us up to the four chord, creating some movement. In the second half of the verse, we use inversions to break up the repeated four and five chords. They also create a rising bass line which lasts four bars and leads us up to the one chord at the start of the chorus. This adds a strong feeling of anticipation for the chorus to come. We use a second inversion five chord at the end of the chorus to act as a step down to the one chord as the chorus repeats. In the bridge we create a descending bass line using inversions on the four and five chords. At the end of the bridge we use the second inversion one chord to delay the five chord. I hope you can see from the song example how useful inversions can be for breaking up a song, creating new interest and movement and withholding certain chords for key moments in the song. It's easy to forget that we are still only using three major chords. Before we move to the next song technique, I'd like to thank you for choosing to watch this video. We rely on your kind support to keep the channel running. If you're able to help us, we now have channel memberships and super thanks available. These allow us to keep on making songwriting content that is available to everyone. Click on thanks and join below this video to find out more. Let's now discuss turnarounds. A turnaround is a chord progression, usually two or four bars, that loops several times or turns around. Around. Their repetition is important in making song parts memorable. For this reason, they are often used in choruses. If you look at the chorus of the song we've created so far, you will see that it is a turnaround. Turnarounds are found everywhere in popular music. We'll discuss them further later on, but just be aware of them for now. So far, we've only used the major chords 1, 4 and 5. If you remember from the beginning of the video, we also had the minor chords 2, 3 and 6. These minor chords can add significant significant new colour to our chord palette and transform our song. An easy way to use minor chords is to swap out a major chord from a progression for its relative minor. Every major chord in a major key has a relative minor chord. 
These two chords share two notes in common. The VI chord is always the relative minor of the I chord, three is always the relative minor of five, and two is always the relative minor of four. Substituting major chords with their relative minor will create new interest to a progression, but won't sound out of place because of the close relationship in notes. Let's look at a few examples. Listen to how the relative minor changes the feel of the progression. Another way to use relative minors is to use them on the same bar as their relative major chord. This can be useful for later repeats of song sections to add a bit of interest. Setting up an expected repeat of a progression and then breaking it in this way is a useful songwriting technique to add interest or surprise with very little effort. Here's an example using a couple of relative minor substitution techniques. As we mentioned earlier, it can be useful to hold back chords for maximum impact, and if we are bringing a minor chord into our otherwise major chord song, delaying its use can be particularly powerful. Let's return to the 12 bar section we discussed earlier in the video. In this example we will hold back our minor chord until bar 9, where we expect to first hear the 5 chord, listen to its impact, and also how we delay 5 until the very last bar. Like the major chords, minor chords also have two inversions each. The process is the same as with the major chords. For example, the two chord A minor in the key of G major has the notes A, C and E. If we put the flat or minor third note in the bass, our lowest note becomes C. This is an A minor first inversion. 
As before, the order of notes above this do not matter. And if we put the fifth note in the bass, it is a minor second inversion. So for A minor, this would be the E note. The minor first inversion is a bit like the major first inversion. It can add a bit of movement to a progression. It also intensifies the minor sound because the flat or minor third note is now more prominent. The second inversion minor is gloomy and foreboding. Like its major second inversion cousin, it doesn't feel like it wants to move as strongly as the root or first inversion chords. As with our major chord inversions, minor inversions are useful for adding interest, displacing or delaying other chords and creating moving bass lines. Here's a progression that uses the three chord and both of its inversions. Listen to how the first inversion creates a rising bass line in bar 10, taking us to the one chord in bar 13. Also listen to the gloomy second inversion as the last bar. This would set us up for a repeat of the section or start another section with chord one. By adding a fourth minor chord to a song, we can really open up the power of the turnaround. Many popular songs have used turnarounds with one, four, and five, and one of the minor chords to generate strong, repetitive hooks in their song. The classic way to do this is to play the minor chord after the one chord, and then using chords four and five to bring us back around to the one chord. You can use techniques we've discussed to alter turnarounds, such as varying the rate of chord change and displacing chords. Displacing chords in a turnaround would be to disrupt the standard approach of starting on one and ending on five. For example, You can use the escalator effect, putting the chords in Roman numeral order. With four chords now, it has a stronger effect. For example,
of the turnaround chords can be inverted. This can strengthen escalator effects, create interest or difference with later repeats and withhold chords for impact. Feel free to experiment and transform your own turnarounds to see which ones work in your own song. Keep in mind that if an inversion bass note matches another chord's bass note in the turnaround, it will weaken the sense of four different chords. Here's a turnaround with three first inversions, creating a strong escalator to the standard one chord. You can also set up future chord progressions with inversions and turnarounds. If you change the bass note with inversions to imply a future chord progression, it can act as a preview of what's to come. For example, an intro could be... setting up a standard chorus turnaround It is worth noting that turnarounds should not be overused. They can make your songwriting boring, cliche and musically lazy. Increasing the number of turnarounds in a song weakens their impact. It also makes your song sound more like many other popular songs because turnarounds are so widely used. Also keep an eye on how many escalator type turnarounds are in your song. Try to keep this to only one and use some of the techniques discussed to make any other turnarounds really unique and different. Let's use some of the minor chord techniques we've discussed to update our song. We'll have a listen and then discuss what's changed. You can see that we have brought in the three minor chord. The intro uses inversions and standard chords to act as a trailer for the chorus bass line. The inversions mask the full chords for later in the song and the chord rate change in bar 4 moves us into the verse. We are also holding back our three minor chord for later in the song. In the verse we have added some movement by increasing the rate of chord change and using some inversions. Look at the 3 chord in the second half of the verse. It is the relative minor of the 5 chord that previously appeared there. It is also the first time we hear the 3 chord. We're using the first inversion so the bass note is the same as the 5 chord and it can still work in our rising bass line that sets up the chorus. It also shares a bar with its relative major chord 5. Our chorus has become a simple primary term turnaround, which is in Roman numeral order. It is the only turnaround and the lack of inversion gives it a clarity compared to the rest of the song. The first half of the bridge is unchanged to keep the descending feel. In the second half we introduce half bar 3 to 1 changes to inject some movement. We use inversions so that the chords share bass notes. The options we have to construct a major key song are now wide and varied. It can become overwhelming sometimes as a songwriter starting with a blank page and having so many options. 
Start with some chords you can play on your instrument or that you like the sound of and go from there. Think about creating a core or scaffolding for your song and then you can use some of the techniques we've discussed to flesh out or improve your song. As you saw at the beginning of the video, we had a total of six chords to use in our major key song. So far we've only used four, but you can of course use five or even all six. If we do this, it further opens up the possibilities with our song. With inversions, that's 18 different chords to play with. You can utilise the techniques we've discussed so far. A few more ideas you can use with more chords are Sections can be entirely minor or major for greater contrast. It is easier to have one turnaround and other sections being less repetitive. It opens up the ability to have no turnarounds at all. It is easier to hold back chords one or five to increase their impact. You can spread the minor chords into different song sections to give each section a new flavour. You can also reharmonize later repeats of song sections. This involves swapping out chords on later repeats to freshen up the sound. The simple the way to do this is to swap out all the chords for their relative major or minor, which we discussed earlier. Another approach is to swap selected chords, maybe major for minor, to highlight sections or phrases in the melody. They don't have to be relative minors. Let's revise our song again to utilise all six chords in the key of G major. We're going to use a full song arrangement this time, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Listen out for the final chorus after the bridge where we use some reharmonizing ideas. We'll discuss all the changes we have made after the song. In the intro we swap the 4 chord for its relative minor of 2. It is the only minor chord in this section. The verse stays the same, just previewing the 3 chord slightly. In the chorus we're changing the second repeat 1 chord to its relative minor 6. Listen to the drama this brings to the chorus. In the 4th bar of the bridge we're swapping out the 4 chord for the 6 minor chord. This shares the bass note with the inversion in the bar before. The rest of the bridge is the same. For our final chorus we have swapped out the chords for their relative minor or major in the first half. The second half is the standard chorus progression and we end on a 1 chord this time to bring the song to a close. There's a lot to remember remember when writing a song. Feel free to watch sections of this video again whenever you need inspiration for your major key songs. The main thing is to experiment and trust your ear. Your opinion is the one that counts. If you enjoy the songwriting process then you'll create songs that you like and if you like your songs then other people will do as well. If you were wondering about the 7 diminished chord we mentioned at the beginning then click on the video on screen for help with it. There is another video about flattened degree chords if you want even more chord options. And if you want to write a melody for your song then we have a video for that as well. 